But this week, King Charles' first portrait as king was unveiled. Mixed reviews. Uh, this is what the artist Jonathan Yeo had to say about the piece. You're treading in sort of well-worn territory when you're doing a royal portrait, basically. You know? And so uh, you, you, you kind of want to, you know, avoid cliches. And one of the things with, you know, the fact he was going to be wearing a red uniform, um, and it's very bright red, the, the, the red, the Welsh Guards tunic. If you paint that in, it's going to be the first thing you see, and maybe the only thing you see. Um, uh, or do you do something to kind of, like, even it out? And so uh, the, painting the background, the sort of reddish pink as well, just seemed like a f slightly playful and more contemporary way of, of doing it. Angela, it certainly is a markedly different uh, piece from other formal royal portraits. What's your view and do you think the king has been well captured? Uh, yes, I love it actually. I absolutely love it. Um, I think the, um, the face of King Charles is absolutely extraordinary. You have so much there. You have determination. You have humanitarian um, feelings. You have a sense of humour. I mean, I think it's absolutely extraordinary, all that within the king. And you think it is him, really, if you didn't know otherwise. I love the butterfly on his shoulder, which some people say if somebody dies, a butterfly comes back to look after you. That could be his late mother, Queen Elizabeth. And um, it's also nature, which he is very keen of. And I love the colour because I think that it is, it is very, very powerful. And yet within that, you see the king all there with his badges and his uniform. Um, I think it's extremely moving and brilliantly done. I think that's a wonderful way to describe it, Angela. And it's also been announced that the King and Queen will be attending D-Day commemorations in the UK and France next month. Um, this will be Charles's first overseas trip since being diagnosed with cancer. Is this a testing of the waters for his recovery and and later overseas trips down the track? Well, I think we've now seen him. He's had two or three weeks where he's been allowed to attend um, thought what he wants to do. Um, and two doctors actually signed papers that he was now well enough to travel overseas. I think the thing is he's still having treatment, but he was like becoming um, like a lion in a cage and he was finding it very, very difficult to be at home. This man has worked day and most of the night since he was a very young man um, as heir to the throne. And he's not used to being at home. And the fact that he can come out, you can see how happy he looks, paler than normal, but he, he's actually yearning to be with people. And he and his mother also felt very strongly about the military. And that day is a very important one. And he very much wanted to go. We've had a lots of things saying he's really working hard to get there and persuading people that, to let him. And, and he and Camilla and Prince William are all going to go over there and show their respect. There won't be very many people who were there at the time. And I think that that's also very important that you, it might be the last time when any of the soldiers who are were alive um, will still be living next year or the year after. Angela Levin, thank you for joining us.